the fun thing about this song is actually that Daniel is singing in there as well, right? In the in the background. So the song was recorded in the in the old offices we had in the motion capture, and so these guys, how many? Four people or four, five people? Maybe That's, even more. Maybe even more. There's a funny you, you recorded, I think, on, on, on Instagram or something or Twitter, like a very short yeah. video. It was pretty fun. Actually, uh, anyway, uh, welcome back to uh, the stream uh, to our uh, two years anniversary Kingdom Come Deliverance stream. So, happy birthday, Henry! Two years, long time, and we have uh, the Lord, the King, Maestro, all in one person. We have him here as well. So he joined our stream. So Daniel Barbara, thank you for being with us, creative uh, director and genius mind behind uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance and other amazing titles. My, my beard is... Yeah, well, there was there was a time where your beard was not gray and longer and so on. And we will go through and these times. Turned to one side, I have to do something. Yeah, because you but, probably... But I, just, I still have like one brown <laughs> spot there. Daniel, I would like to go to watch the old cat, uh, Kickstarter video actually and uh, listen to the story how everything started and how we ended up sitting up sitting here right now first of all daniel i would be interested i mean you people know you eventually that you are also the father of the first mafias mafia one mafia two and partially of three right no not no no but not Peter pekas was doing three not i was working on three but zero things that i did went there so uh, but how did you and why did you decide to at one point say screw Mafia and let's go Henry? Every time I speak about it, I'm afraid that somebody's gonna sue me. But, <laughs> but, but well, as I said, me and Victor actually. Botsan. Botsan, who mm -hmm. works here as a lead designer. Uh, we both worked on it and a couple other people that are not here. Uh, we're working on the design and script for Mafia Free mm -hmm. for, I don't know, one or two years. Mm -hmm. And when it was done and approved several times, mm -hmm. we were told that we have to write it from scratch. And I left uh, because I didn't want to spend another two years doing something that I was happy with. Was the idea of Kingdom Come Deliverance existing before Warhol Studios or was it first I will do my own thing and then let's see what exactly? I wanted to do a medieval RPG since my high school and we actually were working on one uh, when I was at high school. High school. Uh, mm -hmm. It, we even had very, very, very early prototype that was uh, very similar visually to, like, or technically, engine-wise. The, the technology was at the level of uh, Elder Scrolls Arena, mm -hmm. uh, around the time of Elder Scrolls Arena, but we had very, very, very little work was done. And then for years I couldn't do it because we, had, we were working on Mafia series and uh, I was constantly wanting to do something different. I read some books about uh, one concrete period. So I started with the beginning of 14th century and uh, so I, I would like I wanted to have something between the year 1300 mm -hmm. and 1500 and uh, so I was looking at interesting moments uh, in, uh, in Bohemia history. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is that I think there is a huge debt uh, we as a, as a nation uh, own to the European <laughs> history or, or culture mm -hmm. because since we were behind the Iron Curtain there, is, there are not many uh, movies or books uh, about uh, this period of time or our history uh, published uh, in the West or generally published anywhere. I wanted to change that. I wanted to present something that would uh, show that interesting stuff happened here as well. But on the other hand, it was very complicated to do anything reasonable because we cannot do epic battles and the technology would be very complicated for that. So uh, I decided to 
choose something a little bit smaller just before who side wars uh, yes. and i found this little war that happened before that and that can potentially lead uh to who side wars one day maybe in, in or, history you mean yeah yeah, yeah. That's interesting. But the story about Henry then grew out of that, right? So you first looked at an interesting part of history, right? And then you said, yes. okay, what can we do in this world, right? Yes, generally. Then I actually found out that, that, that there are not many uh, very detailed uh, chronicles of, of some specific people and stuff, which is mm -hmm. very, very rare, uh, even if that, that, that is not too mm -hmm. far in the past. Uh, so um, I studied all the possible literature and then I, and then I, I decided that I will look at uh, some places that, that, that were built or uh, already standing at the time and I looked at the history of those places or so castles, cities, uh, some, some, some locations and I was looking uh, for some specific period of time if something happened at the place mm -hmm. and when I, when I found uh, enough interesting places where something interesting happened at the same time I kind of got them together mm -hmm. and uh, the story started to emerge. At the time when, when we were pitching the game, I already had the core concept of the story in place. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it, but generally the idea was a little bit crazy because like you have to you have have to start uh, quite a big company mm -hmm. for which you need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 2000. 2009 at the time so uh, it was crisis so nobody was actually having some excessive money uh, for crazy ideas so it was kind of tough and but basically I I didn't know Martin Klima mm -hmm. with Who is whom the, one of the I founders. founded the company yeah. uh, so so I but I knew Victor we were working together so I told Victor that maybe I would like to start something he told me that he knows martin that's actually a producer that he would like to do something as well maybe and then together we started to look for uh, some possible investors which which i said as i said was very complicated at the time and the second problem is uh, that the gaming industry is very conservative uh, which is a shame uh, so when somebody arrives and offers you something interesting, they mostly look at your uh, portfolio mm -hmm. and previous uh, achievements. And everybody saw that I did uh, big city open world crime games. Yes. And I wasn't offering them city open world crime game. They were at first they were very friendly, but when they heard that I want to make an RPG, they were like, "Oh, oops, nope." Nope. Uh, <laughs> And, How about no? Uh, and even later, when we actually had the RPG already in production and it looked good, mm. uh, it was very bizarre that nobody wanted it. Generally, we visited a couple of investors, a mm -hmm. couple of publishers, and it took us about almost two years. Mm -hmm. I spent all my money, so, huh. so I was, I was, from time to time, I, I. I did some uh, small design job for someone who needed Delivered help. Delivered pizza or but, something. But, well, well, it was mostly design, <laughs> but, but, but nothing big. I wrote for a magazine. Uh, mm. I'm writing for a magazine regularly yeah. for like last 15 years, so, so I wrote a little bit more. Then it looked, started to look quite desperate because like we were actually doing something. So I was, mm. I was writing some parts of design, yeah. uh, preparing if, if we get some fin funding that we will actually be able to start. I uh, was negotiating with people that, that, that would like to join us, uh, writing a lot of books. Uh, but in the end, we, we had very bad uh, results. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden, someone called that he heard that we are looking for the money and that he would like to give us <laughs> some. I have some spare money uh, here. How about yeah, you take so, it? So and, th and then we went the next. Well, this investor who jumped in, uh, we still th th didn't fund anything yet. We still had to go on Kickstarter, right? And that's why we are also here today. Then this happened Actually, in 2014. The old Kickstarter video. Oh boy. 
We can, I can, after that I will ask you what went wrong because this was the very, very first video ever. Oh, not very first video ever, but this was the video that was, that was placed on Kickstarter. I have to put down the sound, I think, a little bit. Uh, to less, like this maybe. Sound should be okay, right? Chris, if you have sound issues, just let me know, yeah? Uh, well, it looks like Kingdom Come already, kind of. Yeah, it's good. So, that's the Neuhof quest. What about the language here? So this is like super posh English. Uh, yeah, but most of the people who are doing the voiceovers here were also acting in the final game. The thing is that, for example, this scene, in my opinion, looks actually better than the final game. Uh, what do you mean, this English? The, the city, city location, the pub in, oh, yeah, in the, the night, pub. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked better. Some of the things didn't materialize, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so so basically like the idea was that we still wanted to have one big battle, which was supposed to be this, uh, but then we realized that it's not possible to do it, uh, even with all the like with a lot, of, a lot of cheating, it would be still. Re it wouldn't be worth the effort. I mm. would say it wouldn't be very good, and uh, we could spend the time on better places uh, or better, better uh, parts of the game. Uh, but generally, this, this, the, the, the whole evolution of this trailer is quite interesting because first. We wanted to have something totally different. I wrote some script for for a story trailer, mm -hmm. and, but we didn't have uh, even the logo changed. But it changed <laughs> several times. Uh, <laughs> the thing is that we so we were we were thinking how we will present the game. So so I wanted to have some story trailer, uh, basically a guy running from humans, uh, stopping at some when he, when he's like. Uh, totally exhausted, he would stop at, uh, at some hill mm -hmm. with the sword, uh, mm -hmm. like helping himself to stand up with the sword, just like on the, uh, the cover. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of the cover was already there. And then he will stand up and turn, uh, turn and fight the, the, the his his uh, the guys who are chasing him. Mm -hmm. But it looked bad. How and many people were you had then before kick, or, or preparing the Kickstarter? Like 20-ish already, right? Yes, B but I think it, around Kickstarter it may, may have been already like 30 or something, but Martin would know better probably, but, but it was like 30 people, but still we had like only like two animators or something, like maybe, mm -hmm. maybe three. And at the time we were doing this trailer, we only had two animators, I think, and they both hated me. Uh, <laughs> so it was it was very tough. In the end, we totally changed the what the trailer was. Uh, mm -hmm. So we did kind of a mixture of uh, scenes, uh, but we did the trailer before, not not for the Kickstarter generally. The, the the trailer was mostly for <laughs> publisher pitching before the Kickstarter. If you see the vision or remember the vision and then see the final product, is that the way you wanted to go? Are you happy with the result? Is there anything major that you said, well, nice try, but we, I, I wanted to try it differently somewhere? I would say that we mostly achieved what we wanted and in some areas even more. Mm -hmm. And if something pieces me or, or generally our, us uh, it, that's the euro junk uh, stuff that was left in the game the problem is that when you are doing such a complicated game it's it's inevitable uh, it's very hard to avoid and everybody who plays games knows that most of really complex RPG open world games have the same issues uh, yes. usually, so even from much bigger teams and with much higher budgets than we had. So, 
Pair XX82 asks you, what was the one feature that you are most unhappy about that didn't make it into the game, which you really wanted to add? Generally, we, we had to delete a lot of quests. Uh, some of them uh, I liked, but I don't remember which. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh, we had to delete some features, so there is no... We plan to uh, horse combat, for example, and it's not there, like very in very very limited way, mm. uh, which is a shame. Sing Sulfur is asking, will we ever get to know uh, Henry's mother's name? Does Henry's mother have a name? But I think in the script it says mother. What are you here for then? Which actually is ridiculous, uh, because somebody accused me of being a chauvinist because I didn't give some characters, some female characters, the names. But and I think the mother was one of them. But it's just like he, the, the Henry calls her mother, so there was no reason for us to uh, give her, give her any other name because we didn't need it. The father also has father written there. Yeah, but he's. She call, tells him Martin something. She yeah. calls him by his name once. Yeah. So I made the name up because the, the sentence makes sense. But there was no need. Nobody was yeah. like only Henry was actually talking to her directly, uh, I guess. So, so and he was telling, speaking to her as mother. Sing Silver also asked, did you always plan to make Sir Ratzik a babe look good, I guess? The idea was that he would be a no, little bit similar to uh, Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and the reason why I started to imagine him like this is that for this uh, for this kind of uh, prototype, uh, when we did the voiceovers, the actor that we managed to get had very similar voice and uh, yeah. behavior as Littlefinger. He, like, like the guy could, like visually not, but Acting wise and voiceover wise, he was almost his double. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. That like that's that's. And then when I was writing, or we were writing the the next stuff with him, uh, I had his character fixed as kind of like little finger uh, type of guy. It's good the W. It's what. Well, he's asking. Why were crossbows removed? But they never ever they, 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 were, they, not they were not removed. They were never there. Yes, so. they were never there, so they couldn't be removed. Well, it was just like some extra work. Yes, we couldn't afford exactly, and it that's that's usually the easiest. May and not be the most complicated feature, but you never know. Like it yeah. seems at first, it seems like just like. We will make some model and uh, just like a couple of animations and then it starts to kind of like get more complicated. So what happens if somebody is uh, loading the crossbow and you hit blah, and then, then, it, then it starts to multiply mm. and we generally made the decision to like, okay, is it worth it? It's not. Like uh, Sexy Biscuit is asking, "What's your favorite DLC?" Now, the fun part about this question is that you, I never, I didn't play them. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> one thing. But the other fun part is that you're no. also not 100% responsible for those, unlike I'm, for the game. I am so the the, evolution, the thing with DLCs is, is that basically I had something else to do, like. Uh, doing nothing, for example, and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but, but generally we made the decision that we will give a chance to other designers to take the responsibility for some like major uh, part of the game and kind of try, it if, try if they, if they uh, can do it. No, but, but uh, the thing is that, that we, we had brainstorms and generally, the, for example, the Teresa quest was uh, the main outline of the quest was uh, written by me. Mm -hmm. uh, then it got much bigger. So mm -hmm. let's say I don't know the the original plot uh, is from me and from mm -hmm. Atoha who worked on it before, and it was finished then by Karel, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and he added a lot of stuff uh, on top of what we originally planned. Uh, the same goes with Amorous Adventures. It was kind of like idea that we had mm -hmm. 
I don't even remember who, if it was me or someone else. And then we had kind of really uh, enjoyable brainstorms, uh, trying to find out those bizarre situations and, and jokes for, for this quest. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then one designer did it, Jakub, uh, and, and so on. So, so in most of those uh, DLCs, uh, I actually didn't have much involvement in the Band of Brothers, which is very good. Uh, I like this one as well. Yeah, yeah. So, but I read it. I had some. I guess I only had some comments uh, to change some stuff. Uh, but generally, th this was Andre's uh, work, and I didn't interfere that much. Uh, and I didn't play most of them. I played. Uh, I played only one. Can you judge which one you think is plot-wise the most interesting? They, they, each one is very different. So, so uh, the Emerald's Adventures is probably the shortest one. It's the f it's very funny, I guess. I, I like the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Band of Brothers is very cool. I like the, the whole concept of of Band of uh, did I say Band of Brothers or Band of Busters? It's Band of Bastards. Mm -hmm. So that's a Band of Bastards. So, so, so the whole idea of the of, of, of this kind of bunch of uh, tough guys that are a little bit controversial, uh, running around, doing, trying to fix something that normally they also do uh, is kind of uh, mm -hmm. that means crime. Uh, <laughs> that, that's kind of uh, cool to to, to play, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the Teresa. That's a woman slot. That's, 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 that's a woman slot. It's very, like, I think it's very good, the, mm -hmm. the whole concept of it uh, showing how kind of tough it was for uh, women uh, at the time, because it was, it was, it was it, like the social status of uh, Females w mm -hmm. was very different, and uh, they had it more complicated than men, I would say. Uh, so, 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 we wanted to show it, and I was a little bit afraid that someone will accuse us of uh, something. Uh, but in the they end, didn't it turned out very well. I think because it, it was. I think it was very good. It was very, very, very good. Woman's slot is probably that's like the most, I guess. The most obvious answer because it, plot wise it gives like the more the most uh, serious dramatic scenes uh, why the others are more into it. the one one is with the building the other one is more about the funny part then you have band of Buster, which is more fighting oriented but there you have like a plot line start beginning drama and so on that's that's and pretty good the thing is that the original the, the, it, it's not some afterthought the it was yeah, there from, from the, the beginning yeah. it was in the kickstarter yeah. And the whole concept that uh, you play uh, the same uh, same event through the eyes of someone yes. else is pretty cool. I think that yes. to, to give you a different perspective from from a different person mm -hmm. is pretty cool, uh, and it works perfectly. Well, the question is, which decision do you regret most in developing KCD, or the other way around? Is there anything you would have done differently now sitting here? I would like to avoid some people. <laughs> so they, they're like it's like we were building the company, uh, we were hiring a lot of people. Uh, some of them were not as good as uh, I don't mean as good uh, like work-wise that they like as character-wise. Some some of them so uh, so that that was like the most uh, bad management skills. Uh, is yeah. what you're saying, okay? Most of them <laughs> were, were not hired by me actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but 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 generally, yeah, like like you you did you you do some personal mistakes. I would say mm -hmm. that, that that you have very limited uh, options. Uh, so we are a very small country. There are not many developers. So basically, you have you are very limited with the work or labor. You have to solve a lot of personal 
crises crisis crises crises mm-hmm. uh, between different people that people and you start to work as a and it's super weird that it's me because I'm usually the guy who is the most arrogant uh, the crisis uh, maker asshole <laughs> around but then in all of a sudden I was working as a uh, psychologist <laughs> for yeah, but like, I think th- uh, how do you say the, the 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 guy who is settles the problems in the police force uh, uh, is it mediator the, the, mediate yeah, yeah. I was working as a police mediator mm. between different people And, and actually, it's 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 worse at the beginning when when it's uh, when, when the team is smaller. Mm. I would say that it's because the people are uh, much more feel feel that the project is much more personal for them. Mm-hmm. There's few people that they, they, so they need to interact uh, more in between each other, and you cannot find if if you don't like someone, you can you can avoid him. I, but I know what Ponorko you mean. Animals. Something like like claustrophobic. No, Ponorko Animals. What's Ponorko Animals? When you're with tight with a lot of people and then yeah. you start hating each other. Yes, yes. How do you say it in English? Hating other people. Pico, you... In Czech it's Ponorko uh, uh, Submarine Sickness. That and now I'm... Remains, remains a mystery, I guess. <laughs> and I would say that I'm most proud of the th- uh, thing that Mm-hmm. That we did uh, basically we uh, make made way for others. So so the whole concept was really rejected by generally everyone uh, mm-hmm. at, at the time. So nobody believed that this is this is viable genre uh, that could sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody was telling us that it's it looked good and uh, you, you are you are able to do it, but we don't think it's going to sell too too good. And we kind of pro- proven that that it works, that mm-hmm. people like it, that that there is an audience for for this, and so other developers uh, now have uh, uh, can try it as well, and they can say, okay, we are doing something like KCD, and I'm really happy that we, we managed to prove that it works. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Dan. Uh, but don't run anywhere further because my next guests are already waiting in the aquarium next to me. Thank you very much, Dan. Bye. Uh, see you in a second, guys. Bye. Bye.